Hello, and today we're going to be looking at the first unit, Unit 1, which is to understand the range of service provision and roles within health and social care, adult and ch children, young people and early year settings. And you need to also open all the documents in the Unit 1 folder, and one of them is the PowerPoint presentation, and there are a couple more documents that you will need that will support you to answer the questions. You will also find the questions that you need to answer for Unit 1 in the folder also. And we're going to go to the first question. And the very first question is asking you to create a poster. Now, throughout the course, there are a number of posters that you need to create. And it always tends to be a bit of a standing joke as we go throughout the week of how many posters we have to do. And then we get to a unit where there aren't any posters and people really miss them. So I hope you do enjoy them and it's just another way of us getting the information and um, you producing it in, in, um, in, a, in a nicer way rather than just sitting and writing sentence after sentence. You can, you know, you can um, use your creative skills if you have them to help you to do the poster. But don't worry if you're not creative, um, you can do it on um, just on a, a piece of paper and um, that will be sufficient. Okay. So we're going to look at the PowerPoint presentation also, as I said, alongside while you're answering the questions. And you will see that the first slide and the PowerPoint presentation tells you the title of the unit. We then get to the second one, and the second um, slide talks about the aims and objectives, so what you will um, be learning throughout this unit and what you will have, you know, have learned by the end of it. Um, so it will give you an overview of the service provision available to all age groups in health and social care and child care. It also will identify what roles are available and also outline the progression routes that you could achieve in health, social care and children's care. So we come to the first slide. So as I say, we'll use the PowerPoint presentation. It will give you some of the examples and the ideas that you can use to support your answers when we work through the questions. So service provision, we're going to look at that first of all. What does it mean? So, you know, just have a little think about what, what does it mean to you? What do you think service provision is? And service provision, it means the service provider. Okay, so within health, social care and children's care, service provision are the types of care that they can receive. Not the actual job role, but the care that's received. So, for example, you will see on this slide, it talks about home care. And home care, in elderly care, this means having needs met by a carer that visits the house. Okay. In children's care, this could be having a nanny or an au pair at home to meet the children's needs. So that's one example of service provision that is provided in home care. Um, situation. So you're now going to look at other types of service provision and again you know can you think of any we've talked about home care so home care is having care needs met in your own home like washing and dressing and um, it could be feeding helping some supporting their shopping things like that. So on the next slide there is a list of different service provision available and we're going to look at, at, at that and for your poster what you will be needing to do is to think about what service provision is offered in think about the area that you live in so you can use some examples of the different types of care because the question is asking you to identify a range of service provision for health and social care and it's asking you to give two examples for each age range so you need two for adult service provision, two for young people service provision, and two for children's service provision. So within your answers, this is the time where you can actually do some research, use the internet, have a look what's actually available in your local area. Now, you need to do this for the to answer the question. However, it will also be very useful for you if any of these areas are one of the areas that you're interested in working in, in this, this, this type of service provision. So it would be good practice for you to actually have a look 
what is around your local area and also you know are there anything any availabilities vacancies for employment in those particular areas in your local community and local area so you'll see on this side here as i said home care has been done for you we have preschool pharmacies residential care community hospitals rehabilitation so that could include substance issues doctor's surgery and daycare So have a look at the next slide and it talks about the different service provision that is offered throughout the different ones we've talked about there. So have a look. Home care, we've said it's about washing and dressing and things like that. Preschool, teaching children, supporting them socially, emotionally and physically. Pharmacies, giving people health advice, recommending medications for colds and things like that. Residential care. So care homes support people's physical, social and emotional needs. Community hospitals. So for example, on the side, it talks about Whittington Hospital, which some of you may have heard of. That provides a service for in antenatal care, radiology, orthopaedic and, and um, general surgery. Rehabilitation. So we said before, substance misuse, um, supporting adults and young people with drugs, alcohol, addiction and misuse. Doctors' surgeries, they can order routine blood tests, give smoking advice, medication, minor injuries um, and give vaccinations, health advice on diet, exercise, things like that. And then the final one on this list is daycare. So that offers care when parents or carers are unavailable to help them to develop emotionally, physically and socially. So the next slide is, is, is talking about who will access this service and again look through the slide I will talk you through it just to give you um, some ideas. So home care, so elderly and um, adults with learning difficulties or learning disabilities, children and um, nanny, au pair. You've got preschool so that's children usually aged between 0 to 5 years of age, pharmacies, adults, children or young people, Residential care, adults in elderly care, adults with disabilities, children or young people who do not have family or home or foster home or if they are in residential school. You've got these community hospitals and anybody of any age can access a community hospital. So most common admissions to hospitals are people over the age of 70 years of age. Rehabilitation. So children, young people or adults with drug, alcohol problems or dependency. Doctors' surgeries, adults and children and young people can access a GP. And daycare, children, young people and adults with physical or learning disabilities. And the last two slides are an example of a poster and as I said at the beginning this question number one is asking you to design a poster to create a poster and on your poster you need to put the, the service provision you need to actually um, look at um, so you need to look at the say what the adult provision is as the service provision is using sentences you need to outline the purpose of the provision so what it offers and then give examples of who would access the different service provision and as I say you will see there's an example um, on two slides now your poster can be done on one A4 sheet of paper and you can do it back to back so you could put three examples on one side and three examples on the other do your research look at your local area and make sure you've got two adults two young people and two children. There may be overlap because as we've already pointed out, some of the service provisions like a hospital caters for all age ranges, whereas a nursery or preschool only caters for children. So just think about that in your answer. So we're going to now look at question number two. And question number two is asking you to outline the difference between statutory 
and independent service position and it's asking you to use sentences in your answer so please remember to do that we're outlining so we need to use sentences we're not going to bullet point we're going to use the sentence um, sentences to answer the question and we're going to use the slides on the powerpoint once again to help us to find out the information before we do do the writing in our workbook so we're going to look at the difference between statutory and independent provision okay so the first or the second slide actually the next slide it's looking at um, statutory service provision and statutory service provision is provided by the government so the government and independent service provision is anything outside the government and any, any provider care outside of the government and you will see on the next slide um, the NHS is the statutory service provision and that is your statutory one and again it says it's provided by the government and then the independent service provision anything of outside of the NHS so private health care charity support voluntary care so they're all anything they're independent service provision so for example you may um need some physio on an on um on you know you might have that back and you want some physio and you've got a couple of options so you may go to your gp um your doctor which is part of the nhs and then they can put you in the direction of a physiotherapist at, at your gp and um, sometimes there may be a waiting list for this so um, you might have a short wait where uh, well, obviously it's a free service because it's part of the nhs whereas you may if you're really desperate go or want or need that um that physio immediately and go to a private physiotherapy um where you might get seen quicker however they you would have to pay for that service and um, sometimes they can, well, most of the time actually, they can be very expensive. So they're the different types of um, your statutory and your independent service. Um, another example could be um, a dentist. Now, um, slightly different with the dentist, where you will have um, an NHS dentist, where um, you still have to pay a fee unless you, you, you know, you're entitled to be um, exempt from that but you will pay um, a smaller fee with an NHS dentist as opposed to going to a private dentist where the fees may be a lot more expensive. So there's just two examples of the difference between your statutory service provision and your independent service provision. So for question two, you need to outline the difference and you can give some examples within your answer to support that as you're outlining it. Question three is asking you to outline how informal care contributes to service provision. Again, remember to use sentences in your answer. It's another outline question. So we're going to use sentences and we're going to give some examples when we're writing our answers. So this one is asking about informal care and how it contributes to service provision. So who might be an informal carer? So on the slide, it's got some examples there. And an informal carer could be a family member, it could be friends, it could be neighbours, it could be community groups. What task might an informal carer actually do? Well, they actually would, um, they can get involved in all types of personal care. And we talked a little bit about washing and dressing earlier on when we were looking at service provision and this is what um, informal care people who do informal care can contribute to to that as well so uh, for adults so it could be personal care washing dressing physical support cleaning shopping for children it could be reading helping them to learn through toys and books young people so supporting them emotionally to manage behavior and build their self-esteem and any other of the above by supporting with holidays events to help them socialize now informal care can contribute to the service provision because 
it can take the pressure off. Um, so it could mean that somebody be allowed home from hospital if they have got somebody there that could support their personal care, and that way they're not they're not staying in the hospital. They're coming back to their own em home environment, but knowing that there is somebody there that can help them with the bit of shopping, to do the washing, to do the, the, the cleaning and things like that. So we're now going to look at question number four and it's asking you to identify the range of job roles within different types of service. Please ensure you include examples from adult, young people and children's care. Now you will see the question I've got three boxes there, so you can do examples in each box. So adults in one box, young people in another, and children's care in another. Now it's asking you to identify, so um, you can use bullet points for this for this answer. However, you do need to just give a little sentence next to each one that you've identified, just to ex give a little explanation of what that actual um, that uh, that job role or that answer is when you are identifying. So you will see there is a list on the PowerPoint and we're going to look at job roles in adult care. So job roles in adult care. So there are a few examples on here and you can use some of these examples. However, like I say, do a little bit of research and have a little look at what that job role actually is. Um, and you've got nurse, support worker, so a support worker in mental health, a support worker in with, uh, working with people with learning disabilities. We've got healthcare assistants who work in hospitals. We've got a dietitian, speech and language therapy, a home carer. We then look at young people's care. So we've got residential care worker. So that could be for an adolescent care home, a youth worker, a support worker for young offenders, a support worker for the homeless, nurse, drug and alcohol substance misuse worker, a teacher, a teaching assistant, a pastoral assistant and finally in job roles in children's care we've got teaching assistant, teacher, social worker, mentor, babysitter, childminder, nursery assistant and a nurse. So there is a large selection there of the different um, job roles um, available in those um, different um, age ranges. So once you've looked at those different job roles and you've looked at question four, we move on to question five. Now, I did say there are some other um, documents that you need to use or that are there to support you with, with the questions. And you need to open this document here, you can see it. And this is looking at, there's a selection of different job roles within this document. There's, it, there's um, a selection of and the knowledge and skills required to, to do that job role. And there's also a progression routes. So you've got the job role, the knowledge and the skills, and the progression routes that you can go on to from, from, from being in that job role. And question five is asking you to choose, and you're going to look at, again, the three different areas. You're going to look at adult service, you're going to look at young people services and children's services, and you're going to choose one job, and you can use this to help you, as I say, you're going to use this. And you're going to, first of all, identify um, the job role at the top, so the service job, the title. And then you're going to look at the knowledge skills required to work in this job role. And then the bottom one is asking you to use sentences and outline a range of progression routes of the adult service worker. So the next three pages, this one, um, or it's five, question five, question six, and question seven to um, use this document here to support you with your answer and any research that you've done in the last question of number four as well um, to answer those questions. So um, thank you very much. Um, that's unit one um, finished. So um, hopefully um, this um, will help. You can use the PowerPoint, use the discussion I'm doing here and any more documents. And any questions that you have, just um, you know, come come and ask me. Oh, well, thank you.